What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another quick little video here, or quick by my standards anyway, which is actually probably quite long. But uh, yeah, so in this video I wanted to go over something that's quite interesting, because it looks like we may have another jailbreak pretty much here. I mean, not quite here yet, but looking like it's going to happen pretty damn soon. So, so the flow has finally disclosed, or well, he requested disclosure, disclosure of this exploit quite a while ago, I believe. He requested it on December 17th. We knew that this was kind of on the horizon. Now, I did mention this back in a previous video going over the 7.02 jailbreak. This is what I said back then. Exploit only works up to 7.02. If the WebKit exploit works higher, up to 7.50 or 8.00, then yeah, that's a that's a really good position for um, PS4 jailbreaking to be in because that just means we need a new kernel exploit because if we already have the WebKit exploit, we just need a new kernel exploit in order to get a jailbreak on even higher firmwares like 7.50, the flow, the person who released the 6.72 kernel exploit, he he released it by basically reporting it to Sony on Hacker One. He got a ten thousand dollar bounty for it. Not too long ago, he also reported another bug to Sony that hasn't been disclosed yet, and he also got another ten thousand dollar bounty for that one as well. So the question is, is that another kernel exploit since he got paid the same amount as he got last time for the last kernel exploit that he reported to Sony? We didn't know exactly if it was actually a full kernel exploit or not because uh, there was no, you know, it wasn't disclosed at the time, but we saw that he got paid the same amount. He got the same bounty, this $10,000 bounty, which is the same amount of money he got for the last exploit that he disclosed, which resulted in the 6.72 slash 7.02 exploit so it looked as if it was likely that it was another jailbreak, another full kernel exploit. So now that it has come out, it looks like it is. Now it hasn't been fully disclosed, it's been disclosed in a limited capacity compared to the previous exploit, which was fully disclosed at the point where we could actually read all the correspondence between the Flow and the Hacker One staff and the PlayStation staff to actually, you know, get the back and forth. We don't have that this time, it's only been disclosed in this limited capacity where all we can see is you know that there has been messages back and forth but we can't tell the contents and we just get a general summary by playstation of the exploit which is probably going to maybe miss out some details so um but just by using the summary i'm sure that uh, other exploiters in the scene will be able to take this information and recreate it themselves so that we can actually get a new jailbreak on a higher firmware now the question is obviously how high does this go uh, what kind of you know firmware version are we going to be able to actually exploit by the looks of things it's not going to work on 8.03 or 8.00 so let me just dispel any any hopes from a lot of people out there straight away because this report was initially filed by the flow on the 26th of July 2020 so quite some time ago so if you go back to what firmware version were people on what was the latest firmware back in July 26 2020 um, so if we have a look on sce.party, we just go to the firmwares, system firmwares. Uh, we go to the latest one that's on here for some reason is only 7.51, uh, which was the 5th of May 2020. And then the one that came after that was, let's see, there's some more on here. So 7.55. Now 7.55, I looked up the release date of 7.55 and it seems to be in August. And 7.55 was I think more of a significant update compared to 7.51. So by the looks of things, my guess would be that because this report was filed before 7.55 came out, then 7.55 was probably the update that patched the vulnerability that was reported here. So that means that 7.55 or higher, this exploit's probably not going to work on, and anything lower than 7.55, it will work on. I just want to jump in here and say that there's people on Twitter reporting that it's um, supposedly working on 7.55 as well. So maybe the August update didn't actually patch this exploit and they, they needed a, a more substantial update and maybe it was 8.00 that patched the exploit, not 7.55, which is possible. Um, but it's still speculation at this point, but I'll update the title and the description uh, once you know proper information is fully established about this. So that means that either, depending on what how high the WebKit exploit works up to, because I can't remember if the WebKit exploit works up to 7.55 or 
So, you know, it looks like it's either going to be that this new jailbreak is going to be for 7.50 or 7.51. So either 7.50 or 7.51, that's what this exploit is going to work up to, which is still a fair bit above 7.02. 7.02 came out at the end of uh, December 2019. 7.50 came out in April, mid-April 2020, which is still a good few months after 7.02, which means that, again, you'll be able to jailbreak more consoles, more consoles will be jailbreakable, you'll be able to run more games. I think 7.50 is that elusive firmware version that people wanted for running uh, Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part 2. I could be wrong, but I think, I think so. I think it would be the base versions of those games would only run on that firmware, though. Um, but yeah, anyway... The point is, you know, we have another new jailbreak potentially on the horizon. Only This has only been revealed today, uh, January 12th, 2021. So nobody's really had time yet to actually fully investigate this and actually try and recreate this exploit and get a, get a new jailbreak out. But hopefully in the coming days, we'll get some more information. We'll see if this does materialize into a proper full-on jailbreak for the PS4 for 7.50 or 7.51. Or maybe I'm wrong and it actually goes up to 7.55 or something. But yeah, it will be really interesting to see. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't start the 7.02 jailbreak tutorial series because then I'd be stopping it when it's just started. The reason I never really made a 7.02 jailbreak tutorial series is I was waiting on a few things. This was kind of in the back of my mind. I was thinking, should I start it or should I wait for this to see if this gets disclosed? And then I was also waiting on some other things because there were problems with Mira and not working properly on 7.02 and there were problems with hen uh, issues with hen as well on 7.02 so i was kind of waiting for those to get resolved before i started the new series but now it looks like i'll potentially wait for this to materialize into a new jailbreak or just see what happens in the coming days but yeah pretty exciting stuff it seems like there's new jailbreaks coming out every couple of months it's so much better thank thank god for the flow because you know if it weren't for him we'd still be back on 5.05 .05, so He's made a huge difference to the scene, and it's a real shame the way he was treated uh, initially when he first came in. And I know that some people wonder why why is it that PlayStation actually allow this to be disclosed? Why do they allow exploits and things to be disclosed? Why are they uh, working with the kind of exploit community, which ultimately is resulting in these new jailbreaks, which we may not have had before? And the reason is is that if they didn't do this and the flow just decided to release this exploit um, as soon as he discovered it to the public then back in July 26 2020 7.50 or 7.51 would have been the latest firmware and then we would ha we would have had a jailbreak for the latest firmware um, which would have been really bad for PlayStation because all the latest games would be you know piratable and potentially people could work on maybe getting online through other methods you know bypassing the security challenges or whatever uh, security sony has in place to stop you connecting online on an exploited console um, and then you know we could have had like a ps3 or xbox 360 situation which you know a lot of people would would like uh, and me included to a certain degree but obviously that would be very bad for playstation so by working with the exploit community in this way rewarding them with bounties they can keep these exploits under the radar pay off the hacker who disclosed them so that they stay quiet at least for a few months so that they can patch the exploit and by that point the majority of people who play on the PlayStation 4 will have updated their consoles to the latest firmware so then once it does get disclosed the it only affects a much smaller portion of the player base because the majority of the player base will be on the latest firmware and will not be able to use the exploit which is a much better position for Sony rather than, you know, the potential of an exploit getting released on the latest firmware, which would be much more damaging to them. And it's kind of good for us too, because we get the people who want to stay on an older firmware to access the exploit, then we get access to more exploits more often as well. So it kind of works for both uh, parties, essentially. So, um, but yeah, uh, this is really, really awesome. So we'll see what happens and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.